What's going on guys? It's me, Gblotter Fan 2016 here, and today we have another model player unboxing video for you guys. I hope you guys are excited for today's video as we do have another retro unboxing for you guys. So really excited for you all retro collectors to see this video, but other than that, we do have another unboxing, and without being said, let's get started. So unfortunately I did not like cover up the like the pads as of this recording, but I will in the next one because like of course. Yeah, because like I don't want to reveal my address and all that. So we have two boxes right here. I will actually unbox them together and like unbox them like individually. So technically what that means is like I'll be unboxing both boxes instead of like unboxing one and unboxing the model. So without being said, let's get started with our first box. Alright, so let's begin with our first box right here. This box comes from Waffle Collectibles and it's one of their like collection sale that I decided to like go for so I went for another model under collection sale and it's one model that I've been wanting for like a very long time ever since like I started collecting a few retro models and I've been wanting to like get this model for or this aircraft for like a very long time and finally it's here there were actually two in one of their collection sales it was like one of the collections, yeah. I think it's it, it just features two models that were in that collection sale, so I went for one. However, that was already sold out quick, so I opted for the second one, and I did manage to get it. So, here it is right there. So, let's cut this thing, and here's my cutting knife. And of course, let's cut through the tape, like so. Without cutting myself, of course. And then, coming after that. Come on, oop. Hopefully it did not, like, go after the box. But other than that... That's good. And hopefully I don't like smear this like marker with my hands. Otherwise it'll be a quite of a mess. But other than that, I'll just do this instead. So there we go. And see, no stains of the black pen. So as I open this up and open all of these, we do have some newspaper, but it's not really reasonable. But I have a very exciting model right here. If I could try like put this out, there we go. Now as I take out all this paper, just gotta make sure that the black ink does not come after me, but come on. Just gotta like, I think there's like a, there's like a piece of cardboard that's like stuck there. But other than that, Waffle Collectibles is good. And yeah, you probably already saw the thumbnail, so you probably know what it is, but for those who want to like stick around, just, yeah. But other than that, trying to like. Do my best to actually get this model out because it's a very exciting model for my collection overall. And come on, I know this is gonna take a while. Already at around two minutes of this recording, this video. All right, and we got her out. So let's take out the newspaper, this like random newspaper. Oh yes, sir, there she is, and right here. Oh yes, sir, we have my first ever Dragon Wings model. And that is the DC-10-30 from United Airlines in the Saul Bass livery. Really excited for this small right here. This is going to be very exciting and this is overall a brand new aircraft to add to my collection as well. And the first of the Saul Bass eras for United Airlines. And I gotta say it looks very nice. But other than that, I am excited to have my first Dragon Wings. And it's going to be perfect for my retro collection. So... I guess that is it for this. Well, this is, that is it for this box. Yes. So that's all for this box right here. So we're gonna yeet that box and move on to my second box. So I'm gonna put this aside and then we'll move on to my hoop. But yeah, I'll put this aside and we'll move on to our second box. And the next box in today's unboxing comes from Panda Fox Toys. Now I did order this like around last week yeah it was around last week i'm not sure if it was on a friday or so but oh wait i think it was like ooh, i can't remember what what i ordered this last week but <laughs> other than that i did order this from last week and of course it's in a big box so there should be another aircraft a uh, heavy aircraft in this case but other than that i'm really excited to unbox this too so let's unbox it so we got that open of course like the panda fox tape and yeah, it's been a while since I last ordered something from Panda Fox. It's all the way back in like December or like late November 2022 is when I last ordered from them. So, really nice to order them again because of course Panda Fox Toys. I really love Panda Fox Toys a lot. And they're one of the great retailers from the mall playing community. And it looks very, and they're, they're very nice I gotta say. 
So we have all these stuff right here. And here we have all these packing paper right here. So we're gonna like take all these out. And I see the mall itself, but first, um, there we go. So here's some 5% discount code right here. This is, the discount code is like 65 Victor Delta November 2. And this expires on April 20th, 2023. So as of this recording, which is March, well, early, early March, you still have time to get this in. So whoever is watching this video and get a model and use this code, thank you. But right here, everybody, we have another Saw Bass aircraft. This is the United Airlines Boeing 747 SP. And like I said, this is another Saw Bass livery aircraft. So why not fill in the void for my DZ-10 with the United 747 SP? So I'm also excited to get this model and overall, it looks very nice. And it's not new to my collection because I already, I already have like a United 747 SP, which is in the Battleship Grey livery. So yeah. But other than that, I'm really excited for this model as well. And that is it for the Panda Fox box. So we're gonna like, whoop, that box. And overall, whew, I'm really excited to dive over these two models into my collection. I'm just excited to like dive, dive in into these two models. They're gonna be amazing for my United collection and my Retro collection. And overall, they are absolutely amazing. And here we have my two Saul Bus aircraft from United Airlines. One is the DC-10-30 from Dragon Wings, and the other one is a Boeing 747SP from NG Models. I am really excited to have these two models into my collection, and they are absolutely amazing for my Retro Fleet, like I said. Mainly the DC-10, because like, I have never had this model in my collection before, and I'm really excited for the DC-10. The 747SP is also exciting too, but I already have one already in my collection, but other than that, really excited to have this. So I think what I'm going to start with first is that United DC-10-30 and then we'll go over the 747SP afterwards. So let's begin with the United Airlines DC-10-30. Alrighty, so let's begin the Saul Bass era with the Dragon Wings 1400 scale United Airlines Douglas DC-10-30. Man, I am super excited to have this model into my collection. I've been wanting this model for... A very, very, very long time, and finally, I have now acquired it thanks to Waffle Collectibles collection sale. And yes, I did got this under collection sale, and honestly, it looks very nice indeed. And I can't wait to see the mall itself. So I've been wanting to have like a DC-10-30 from United Airlines in the Saul Bass Live for a long time. Mainly, I would look at it on eBay, and those would go up like around 100 bucks. So I decided not to go for that. But as soon as I stumbled on Waffle's collection sales, I saw this aircraft and I immediately got it. So I was very excited for that. And here she is right there. And this is also my very first DC-10 in my collection. So I'm really excited for that. Mainly I think the DC-10-30 looks a lot more nice because of the main landing gear. But other than that, I am beyond excited to have my first Dragon Wings, as I said. And I'm really excited to see what this model looks like. Of course, it might look weird, but I'm just eager to see it. So you got the DC-10-30 tiles right there, looking very nice in that gold. You got the United Airlines tiles right there, which I'm assuming this is like a blue tulip, because I don't think this is what the, it looks like. I mean, the tulip logo looks is like similar to like the Saul Best area, but the United font looks quite different. And then you got the vintage livery in one for the scale premium collection. And I think this is the actual image of the aircraft itself, which I'm not sure who took this picture, but I'll give credit. Well, I don't know who took this picture, but other than, other than that, really nice picture right there for someone whoever took this photo. And yeah, it looks very nice. And then you got the United is a registered trademark of United Airlines, Inc. And it's under license. So this aircraft is licensed by United right there. Moving on to the sides, you got their database ticker right there, special version, and the Dragon Wings logo. Man, really excited. And then you have all these stuff, of course, they are based in Hong Kong, if I were to guess. Well, they're made in China, but this is Hong Kong, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I think they're based out of Hong Kong, if I were to guess. Here's the side, this is another side right there. The item number of this model is 55158. And I think this is another, I'm not sure if this is like, Hong Kong, well, this is, I'm not sure if this is like Kai Tak Airport, I'm guessing. I'm not sure, but on that, you have this airport right there. And on the back side, it's pretty much the same, so nothing too 
go over right there. But other than that, I'm just here to unbox this model and see my first Douglas DC-10 for the first time. Now with Dragon Wings models, I had to like unbox it from the very top right here. So there's like a flap right there. So like I said, this is my first Dragon Wings model. So I'm not really familiarized with this like brand as of yet. But well, I've seen some videos of like retro unboxing with Dragon Wings, but never got one for myself. So well, it's already open. But I'm excited to have this. And is it upside down? Yeah, it kind of looks upside down. But other than that, taking her out of the plastic. And here she comes in full force. Wow. Whoo. Wowzers. And of course, I do have like a... Is there anything else? Okay, nothing's there. Then you have this pamphlet right here, this paper. And as you can see, this is how you would like... Put in like the landing gear. So this is for the DC 10-30-40. And this is what it would look like if you were put on the landing gear. So yeah, there's that. And let's start off with the stand. So here's the stand right there. Looking very nice. And here's the model itself. Man, I'm just excited. Wow, take a look at her right there. Whew, wow. All right, let's take out that cradle. Oh, yes, sir. Wow. Oh, my God. Take a look at Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness, wow. Holy, wow. Take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, wow. Seeing this, seeing this mall for the first time. Wow, this is absolutely beautiful. Wow, ooh, yes. Yes, sir, wow, ooh. I'm quite blown away, honestly. <laughs> But other than that, this is absolutely incredible. And man, I'm so fortunate to have this model into my collection. I'll place on the stand like in a separate video. Well, I'm not going to like record me placing the stand on. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, wow. I can't believe I have my very first DC-10 in my collection. And my, oh my god, what just, whoo. This is absolutely incredible. It's incredible. Wow, this is... I have no words. This is absolutely amazing. And here she is, the Dragon Wings 1-400 scale United Airlines Douglas DC-10-30 in the Saul Bass livery. Wow, I am just like... I am blown away with this model already. This is absolutely wonderful and... Wow, Drag Dragon Wings, they did a fantastic job on this model right here. And I gotta say, it looks absolutely beautiful. So, of course, we're gonna start with the starboard. Wait, that's not the starboard. That's the port side. But yeah. So, here's the port side. This is the front side of the aircraft with your cockpit windows right there. And you got the nose shape. Not pretty much bad for a Dragon Wings model. And here's like, there's like a den. And I'm guessing this could be like the landing light if I were to, or like the taxi light if I were to guess. So that's kind of like some interesting detail right there. Of course, you got the red, uh, the like the orange, red, and blue stripes right there that create the salt bass livery. And then you got the L1 boarding door right there, looking pretty nice. And then you, I think these are are these like cargo doors if I were to guess. I'm not sure, but those are like the cargo doors if I were to guess. I think this is like the front cargo door right there. And then you got the nose gear right there, looking pretty nice. And I think it's well, very well detailed around that time. And then you got the, I think this is like the cargo door of the aircraft, the L cargo door, which is quite interesting on how they would like places in front. So I'm not sure if this can be acting like a combi variant, quite not sure, but all right, that, there's that. And then you got the L2 boarding door right there. Then you got the United Airlines font, like the font and the logo back in that time frame. Okay, very nice. I think this is like 70s area. It's like, this is like the 70s era, if I were to guess. Leading all the way to like around the 80s, which I gotta say, it's a very nice livery. And then moving on this side, there you got some like other panels right there, looking pretty nice. There isn't that much detail as compared to like some models you see right now, but other than that, I think Dragon Wings did a very nice job on this model in this case. Well, for the time frame that is, but other than that, looks very nice. And then you got your emergency exit door or the LC door right there, looking pretty nice. And these are your engines right there, these are. GE CF6 engines right there. So I think this is like engine number one right there. And then you got the main landing gear right there. Looking very nice. And then you got like your leading leading slot detail. Oops, I did not mean I did not meant to hit that with my pencil, but 
you got some leading leading flaps well trailing flaps well the leading flap stuff like the ground flaps and you got your slats right there looking very nice there is that much there's not that much detail other than like some kind of like silver thing so you got like as you can see so let me just like zoom it out so let me zoom this out there we go so you got your trailing edge right there these are all your flaps and your ground flaps and the ailerons and yeah and these are your leading edge right there there's your slats and like the ground flaps or i think this is like the leading leading edge flaps if i were to guess and then you got your slats right there and then there's your engine pylon right there looking very nice and no fairings on it. well there is fairings except there are they have the shape of like that they have the shape of this on the dc10 which is quite interesting and let me just set her down right there and move on to the very back side so right here well not the very back side so, but around this area so you got your i think this is like the other cargo door right there and then you got your l4 door right there and then you got all these like others uh, like the sheet line of the saw bass delivery coming all the way from here and then you got your U.S. flag right there, and the aircraft registration, which is November 1859er uniform. Looking very nice. And now moving on to the empennage of the aircraft, on the very back side, you got the horizontal stabilizers right there. And then you got, I think this is like the engine number, I think this is like engine number three, if I were to guess. I'm not really familiar as on where the engine placements are for like these like multi-engine aircraft, like tri-jets or quad-jets. So I'm, guess I'm guessing this is like, or maybe this can be like, Engine number two, or let me know in the comments what engine this is so I could like respond. So you got like that engine right there, and then I don't see like an APU somewhere, probably because it's a trijet. And then there's the Sol Bass tail looking absolutely very nice. And yeah, you got all these like various details, like the rudder detail, which is also very nice as well. And now moving on to the starboard, pretty much the same. Of course, you got all these like. I think these are some more cargo doors if I were to guess, so quite interesting right there. So, other than that, really interesting detailing from Dragon Wings right here. And now we move on to a top view, so here's the top view right there, looking very nice. Well, there isn't that much detailing or like some stuff like antennas or beacon lights, but for Dragon Wings, it seems reasonable. And then here's the bottom side of the, air bottom side of the aircraft, so you got your stand hole right there, and here's the main landing gear. So looking pretty interesting right there. There's a the middle landing gear right there looking very nice and yeah, very nice indeed. And then moving on to the very front of the aircraft looking very nice. Let me just like try to like, there we go. Kind of like my, the best thing I can like think of. And then here's the back of the aircraft right there looking very nice. And the horizontal stabilizers are actually made out of plastic as I can like tap button right there. Yeah, the wings are also made out of plastic too. So quite interesting right there. So. Other than that, this is a very nice mall to have. In, this is a very nice mall to have in my collection. I gotta say, my first DC-10 in my collection, and it absolutely looks amazing. And of course, since this is a retro aircraft, I do want to give you guys some quite a little bit of history of this aircraft because this aircraft has a lot of history. So let's jump into the history portion of this aircraft. So this aircraft had a lot of history during its timeline, but before I get into that. Let me give you guys some information about this aircraft. So, this aircraft has the manufacturing serial number of 47819. The line number of this aircraft is 314. And the aircraft is 34.6 years and unfortunately it is scrapped. So that's quite unfortunate for this plane right there. But I wish it was preserved but I don't think so. But other than that, really interesting history for the aircraft. So. A little bit more information right here. So, of course, this aircraft is operated by three GE CF6 50 C2 engines, which of course is classified as a trijet. And the aircraft before it was a DC, well, after it was a DC 10 30, it was then converted into a DC 10 30 CF, so that's converted freighter. So, quite interesting, it was then transferred into a, well, converted into a freighter aircraft. So, Let's begin here with the history of the aircraft. So this is where it all begins with the operations of each airline. So let's begin. So let's see. Ah yeah, so well before that, let's give you the first flight. So the first flight of this aircraft was January 17th of 1980. And now we move on to like the operators of the aircraft. So we'll begin here with World Airways. So they took delivery of this aircraft first on February, no, not February, but on April 9th of 1980. 
and that aircraft was registered November 109 in Whiskey Alpha. And quite interesting right there. So it didn't serve that long and like around 1983 of March 25, 1983, it was then transferred to Air Florida, which still had that same registration. And then on July 1st of 1985, it was then transferred to Malaysia Airlines, so quite interesting. And they happened to keep that same registration, so really interesting right there for this aircraft right there. But on April 10th of 1986, it was then transferred to United Airlines, which was then registered November 1859 uniform. Of course, the aircraft you're seeing on screen now. So, it would serve with United Airlines for quite a long time, much longer than all the other airlines that operated this aircraft. And around the 19, like, I'm guessing around the 90s is when this aircraft was converted into a freighter. So, it would remain as a passenger aircraft throughout the 80s, but for around the 90s, or like, I'm not sure if it was around the 2000s, is when this aircraft would then be converted into a freighter. But it will still operate with United Airlines until 2002, when it was then transferred to Brasmex in Brazil. And it was delivered to this airline on September 5th of 2002, which was then re-registered to Papa Romeo Bravo Mike Echo. And then in 2005, it was then transferred to Aero Air on February 19th of 2005, of course. And that aircraft was re-registered November 478 Charlie Tango. So this aircraft had quite a history right there. And like I said, this aircraft is unfortunately scrapped. And it's stored at OPF. So OPF is like Miami Opa Loca Airport. Or like an airfield. But yeah. But other than that, this aircraft did have a long history throughout its timeline. And while I can say it's unfortunate that this aircraft was scrapped, at least I do have the models, so it, I can like represent it in my collection, or especially my United collection and my retro fleet. But other than that, Dragon Wigs did a very fantastic job on this model, and I'm just so fortunate to have my first DC-10 into my collection. I'm looking forward to get more DC-10s in the future. But other than that, this model will do. So, that is the United DC-10-30 in the Solbass. Let's move on to our second Solbass aircraft. And here's my second Solbass aircraft, and that is the NG Models 1400 scale United Airlines Boeing 747 SP. I am also excited to have this beautiful model into my collection, and while I already have a 747 SP model in my collection already, this is perfect to fill in the void for my other 747 SP I have from United, which is in the Battleship Grey livery, so really nice to have this model as well. So let's get reviewing of the box. The Boeing 747 SP tiles right there looking pretty nice. And you got the CGI image of the aircraft right there. And then you got these various United Tulips right there, looking very nice. If you were to get like the Friendship 1, then you would like have this box and it would complete this nice box art right there. And then you got the United Airlines tiles back in like their 80s to like 70s font, like their timeline back then. And then you got the red, red, blue, well, red, orange, and a blue cheat line right there, which representing like the Solbass colors. And then you got the NG Malls logo right there in all orange, 1400 scale diecast collectible models, diecast metal. And then you got the Boeing license product there and the registration of the aircraft, November 140 Uniform Alpha. Oop. Hang on guys, there we go. And then you got like the sides right there, looking pretty nice, this is the bottom side. And then there's one side right there, you got the United Airlines titles, pretty much the same, so no biggie. And then here's the back side of the aircraft right there, well the box in that case. And you got the NG logo right there in all blue. And of course, pretty much the same. There's their social media pages. And the item number of this model is 07013. And then there's your warning hazards right there. So, really excited. Let's unbox this. I'm also excited for this model right there. And here we go. So, of course, with NG models. Because I take it off on the side. And this is not one of their models that doesn't have the CRP. Because this model came out way before the CRP existed from NG. But other than that, it's nice to have this. And there she is. Wow, looking very nice. So of course, let me take out the cradle stuff and the plastic, or the plastics on top. Yeah, all right, so, oop, there's another piece of plastic right there. And of course, let me try grabbing it from the tail. Or let me try pushing this down. Come on, let's see how that works. There we go, so, like I said, grab her from the tail. Come on, all right, there we go. And as I slowly pick her out of the box, well, the cradle, 
there she is right there looking very fantastic and of course it's heavy well let's check the qc stuff yeah that's good the horizontal stabilizers are also good and yeah and there she is right there wow looking very nice right there and ng models did a fantastic job on this model as well looking very nice right there wow it looks fantastic i gotta say wow i gotta say of course the Saul Bass delivery looks absolutely amazing and really fortunate that this model also came intact as well. And here's the NG Models 1 for 100 scale United Airlines Boeing 747 SP in the Saul Bass delivery. Wow, this is very amazing, just like my DC 10 30. But the color is very vibrant right there. Wow, typically what NG would do. And wow. This is just amazing, I gotta say. What a fantastic job by NG. So of course, let's start with the front on the port side. So there it is right there. So you got your cockpit windows right there, looking very nice. And then you got that beautiful 747 no shape, or I should say iconic 747 no shape, looking very nice. And of course you got your iconic hump right there, looking very nice. And then there's your emergency exit door for the pilots to get out of. And then there's your antenna right there, looking very nice. There's your L1 boring door right there, and of course right here, this would be like first class. Of course, first class is also on the upper deck as well. And then you got your nose gear and your nose gear door, which I think it's kind of like, it kind of looks like it's actually like, mm, I'm not sure if it's like chrome or something, or like it's like glitter, but I'm not sure. I may have to look at the back later. But there that, you had that. And then you got your L2 boring door right there, and of course you got your landing light right there, which is another very nice detail. If you, I can try like focus. There we go. So there's the landing light right there which is also nice great attention from ng and yeah and then next up you got your engines right there these are jt 90 engines right there looking very nice and of course you got this mill section right here i think this is where like i think this is business class and then from here this is where economy class would start yeah and then there's your main landing gear right there it's blocked by the engines and the pylons but it looks very nice if I could try like moving on this side, well, yeah. You can see it much more better on this side right there. So there's your main landing gear right there. If I could try like, there we go. There's my pencil, so there it is right there. Let's look at some wing detail. So let me scroll out, scroll out of my camera and give you guys the wing detail. So here's the wing detail right there, looking pretty nice. And of course you got your slats, flaps, and these are like the leading edge slats right there, up close to the very front. And you got all this like, metallic thing looking very nice which is pretty nice attention to detail from Angie as well you got like a metallic square right or a rectangle right there looking pretty nice and then you, you got your spoilers or sp speed brakes and then you got your trailing edge flaps right there and then there's your slats right there and of course you got this like groove details which is very nice I gotta say and quite interesting I think these also represent some slat detail as well and yeah really nice that Angie also did something like this to make it look nice and then there's that extension piece for like wingtip vortices and all that. This is kind of like an aerodynamic thing from the 747 SP. Of course, like produce like less wingtip vortices. I'm not sure if I would call this a winglet though. That's I'll just call this an extension piece. But that's what it is for the 747 SP right there. Looking very nice. And then there's your L3 door right there. This is the back side. So there's the L3 door right there looking also nice. And then this is where like economy, I think this is where economy would be and I think this side would be like premium economy. And then, then you got your L4, then you got your L4 door right there. And then you got your US flag right there, looking pretty nice. And the registration of the aircraft of November 140 Uniform Alpha once again. And then moving on to the empennage of the aircraft, you got the horizontal stabilizers right there. And the APU right there, auxiliary, auxiliary power unit, sometimes it's like a... I would just like call it APU for short, but saying it in like its full name, sometimes hard. Anyways, and of course you got, like I said, you got the horizontal stabilizers and the APU. And then you got your Saul Bass tail with that beautiful, un be beautiful United Tulip, excuse me, but there's the Tulip right there. And yeah, very nice livery for the 747, and it looks very nice. And now moving on to the starboard side of the aircraft, and yeah, pretty much the same. Except you got your cargo door right there, looking pretty nice. And the back cargo door should be right there. And now for some different perspectives of the aircraft, so let me just bring this up. So here's the top side of the aircraft right there with your antenna and your beacon light, looking pretty nice. And moving on to the bottom, if I can maneuver it properly. 
here's the here's the bottom right there with your main landing gear and your stand hole right there and of course you got that beautiful metallic gray design right there at the bottom looking very nice and yeah ng killing it on like this like portion of the aircraft here's the front side of the aircraft nice ground flex configuration of this plane and moving on to like the back side if i can try maneuvering it there we go looking also nice as well so overall a very nice model from ng models and i'm just so fortunate to have my second salt bass livery aircraft right here in this unboxing and overall a very nice aircraft to add to my collection and my 747 sp collection as well and i gotta say it looks very nice looking very nice of course i would rather prefer the salt but well i would still prefer the battleship grade livery for the ng 747 sp from united but the salt bass livery is much more better I, i'm not saying that well, let me like rephrase that but what i meant to say is like i would still prefer the battleship grade livery from united airlines from ng models but i think the 747 sp and the salt bass also looks nice but not in the line of the battleship grade but other than that it's still nice for my collection and i'm so fortunate to have this model as well now let's go over the history of this aircraft so this aircraft didn't have much of a big history as compared to that united dc 10-30 that i reviewed earlier but i'll still go over the history of this particular aircraft so as i pull up air fleets here's some information right here so the manufacturing number or serial number is 21022 and the line number of this aircraft is 265 and the first flight date of this aircraft is July 4th of 1975 which is Independence Day of that year and of course the type is a 747SP21 like I said and the aircraft is powered by four Pratt & Whitney JT90-7A engines and the aircraft age as I pull up planespotters.net is 22.6 years and unfortunately this aircraft is scrapped which is sad but this aircraft was only operated by two airlines starting off with pan am on april 26th of 1976 that aircraft was registered november 530 papa alpha it would then serve for like pan am until like 10 years later which is then transferred to united airlines on february 11th and this aircraft was re-registered to november 140 uniform alpha which is the aircraft you're seeing right now on your screen and this aircraft would also fly for United for 10 years until it was broken up in Admore Municipal Airport in 1996. And yeah, that's basically it for this aircraft. So quite unfortunate for this aircraft to be scrapped. But I mean, like, I wish that aircraft was preserved, but many of United's aircraft are scrapped, except for Sophia, mainly the 747SP from United, the former Pan Am planes. But other than that, that aircraft had a good life with the airlines and the airline industry. And overall, it was a nice airline for Pan Am and United. So, so that is pretty much it for the history of this aircraft. And I forgot to mention that the aircraft was previously named Clifford Mayflower. So, yeah. But other than that, quite a history for this aircraft. And yeah, so that will do it for this unboxing video. So, let me pull my two Solbass aircraft together. Or put my Saul Bass aircraft, my two planes, in this cutting board, or whatsoever board I could like to call it, and conclude this video. So, let's do that right now. And here are my two United Airlines Saul Bass aircrafts in 1 400 scale. Man, these models are absolutely amazing, and really nice to have two of my first ever Saul Bass aircrafts in my collection the DC 10 and the 747 SP. Those models are absolutely amazing. And it just so happens that I see a color difference. Of course, you got the NG 747 SP, Saul Bass United Airlines, which appears very vibrant, I gotta say. I really like that. While compared to the Dragon Wings, the DC-10-30, well, it's a long story, but other than that, I'm really glad to have these two models into my collection, and it's just perfect for my United Airlines collection, my retro fleet and my overall collection in general so they are absolutely amazing i can tell you what the salt bass planes wow so amazing i'm hoping i can get more in the future maybe like a narrow body or a dc8 or a 737 who knows but for now these two heavies are perfect so that is it for today's video so i hope you guys enjoy Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on that post notification bell so you won't miss a video like this anytime soon. And don't forget to check out more of my Mall Plan unboxings by 
looking at my playlist, so you can check that out. And yeah, check out all my unboxings from there. So, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Anyways, good night.